Welcome, I'm Katherine Hadro, and this is EWTN Pro-Life Weekly. Pro-Life 2020, we have complete Catholic analysis of this week's Democratic National Committee convention and look at what a Biden-Harris presidency would mean for the pro-life movement. Democrats for Life, we speak with two different pro-life Democrats for their reaction to their party's extreme pro-abortion platform. And Planned Parenthood concert? We tell you which celebrities sang for a Planned Parenthood-sponsored DNC event and musical performance. We are dedicating this week's show to pro-life analysis of the 2020 Democratic National Committee Convention. Former Vice President Joe Biden formally accepts the Democratic Party's presidential nomination at this week's mostly virtual DNC convention. Many pro-life leaders say the Biden-Harris ticket is the most pro-abortion in American history. The 2020 DNC convention doesn't look like what anyone expected. Due to the coronavirus, instead of in a big arena, Democrats this week held almost all of their 2020 nominating convention virtually instead of in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and it was largely scaled back. But the convention's main mission moved forward to officially announce Joe Biden as the 2020 Democratic presidential candidate and Kamala Harris as the vice presidential candidate. Many pro-life leaders call the Biden-Harris campaign the most pro-abortion ticket in U.S. history. We will protect women's constitutional right to choose. Biden, who served 36 years in the U.S. Senate before becoming President Barack Obama's VP, had long supported the Hyde Amendment, which protects taxpayer dollars from going to abortion. But now, as the Democratic presidential nominee, he wants to repeal it. Biden has also recently said he would end the Little Sisters of the Poor's exemption from the Obamacare contraception mandate if elected, while simultaneously touting his Catholic faith throughout his campaign. I just walked out the side door of St. Peter's Basilica after a meeting and getting an opportunity to shake hands and have a brief conversation with Pope Francis. And with Biden's announcement last week that California Senator Kamala Harris is his running mate, pro-life leaders were quick to point to her extreme pro-abortion record, such as when she campaigned on the promise state pro-life laws would first need to receive her Justice Department approval. And until that law is determined to be in compliance with Roe v. Wade and its progeny, it cannot go into effect. And while working as California's attorney general, Harris had Center for Medical Progress's David Delayden investigated over his undercover Planned Parenthood videos. She even ordered a raid on his apartment. Delayden told EWTM Pro-Life Weekly last year the investigation happened as Planned Parenthood was simultaneously funding Harris's Senate campaign. Uh, we now we have in 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 the investigative the investigator notes mm -hmm. from the attorney general's office now, they recorded in their uh, case notes Planned Parenthood specifically requesting of Kamala Harris's office that they would specifically go in and seize the videos from me. That's just one of many things that Kamala Harris, as attorney general of California, was willing to do to put the powers of her law enforcement office at the service of the interests of a, of a powerful and favored political backer at Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood has endorsed the Biden campaign for presidency. But there are Democrats who do not approve of his abortion advocacy. Just last week, over 100 Democratic politicians called for the DNC to moderate its official position on abortion in a letter to the platform committee. Joining us now via Skype is pro-life Democrat, Louisiana State Senator Katrina Jackson. Katrina, welcome back to the show. You are one of the over 100 Democratic politicians calling on your party to moderate its official position on abortion. What exactly do you think the Democratic Party platform should be when it comes to abortion? Well, when I joined the party um, at 18, of course, when I registered to vote, the Democratic Party's platform was a very diverse position. 
it was not um, so strongly aligned with uh, choice and life advocates had a place in the party as well. We were considered and still are in so many ways the big tent party where we understood that Democrats had varying uh, beliefs on abortion and whether they were pro-life or pro-choice, we could all coexist in the party uh, because we had so many other issues that we agreed upon. We find ourselves in a situation where uh, the the votes of a few that lead the party have tended to exclude our, exclude our pro-life position. We consider, of course, I've said this a number of times, whole life, and so mm -hmm. we would like them to see the party go back to that position that understands that Democrats are diverse in their belief on abortion and that they are pro-life Democrats all across the nation. Is it possible to even have a moderate position on abortion? Can you clarify that? A moderate position? My, my position is clear. I'm pro-life. Mm -hmm. And and so I think you're either pro-life or pro-choice. I think what we saw from uh, former Vice President Biden at some point was he was, I think, what you would consider moderate. He uh, was in favor of the Hyde Amendment and some other issues, but and also was not in favor of late-term abortions, as I understand it, at some point. So I guess that's what you would consider moderate. I don't consider myself moderate. Mm -hmm. I am 100% whole life. And so that's where I am, and I can speak for me. As per the party, the party has always, up until probably the last eight to 10 years, had a um, position on abortion that was for those who were pro-choice, it was safe, legal, and rare. And they welcomed pro-lifers into the party, and that's what we would like to see. What's your response to people who say, if you're pro-life, it's time to get out of the Democratic Party? Well, I'm whole life. And so coming out of the Democratic Party definitely doesn't mean going into the Republican Party because there are things that I believe in uh, as passionately regarding life that the Republican Party doesn't believe in. One thing that's really big to me is making sure that people have uh, access to health care, making sure that the quality of life as a person, I care about the life from conception to death. And what that looks like is a myriad of legislation that doesn't agree with either party 100%. And so when people say that, I, I tell them that the bottom line is I'm an American first and I'm a Christian, mm. number one. And so my party platform does not designate where I am on any given issue. When the party agrees with me, we fight alongside each other. When they don't, we fight on opposite ends. That would be my same place in the Republican Party mm -hmm. because I don't agree with everything that the Republican Party believes in. I don't believe in the death penalty. I believe that the death penalty is a life issue. So I would definitely not fit into the Republican Party. And so for those who are telling us that on 70% of our issues, we align with the Democratic Party. On the life issue, we do not. What is on, your on reaction? Issues mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, continue, please. Yeah, on issues really regarding Christianity, where we stand, what um, our Bible tells us, we don't align with them on those issues. But on, on other social issues like access to health care, Medicaid expansion, criminal justice reform, and those issues, we align with the party. What is your reaction to Joe Biden's selection of Senator Kamala Harris as his running mate? And what does this pick signal to pro-life Democrats such as yourself? I don't think that pick si signal anything. I respect her as a woman. I respect her for her hard work in other areas outside of the pro-life arena, okay? But we knew what we were facing and we've been facing it for a year as pro-life Democrats trying to uh, take our positions back in the party and for the party to be diverse and open to us that doesn't change with a pick of Kamala Harris as the vice presidential can uh, candidate in his selection because uh, Joe Biden had already made his stance on abortion known. Mm. Do you have any hope for the future of pro-lifers in your party? Are you seeing any signs of encouragement there? Yes, yes. Recent polls have shown that overwhelmingly like a third or more Democrats registered in, in the United States are pro-life. And so what I'm what you're seeing now is us coming together nationally to take our rightful place back in the party and to do away with this pro-choice. You must be pro-choice. You must be a pro-choice advocate to be in a Democratic Party. What you see us doing now, and this is why I have encouragement and hope for us, is that you're seeing us come together like never before to take our rightful seat. Wow.
And I know we mentioned you were one of the signatures on that letter of pro-life Democratic mm -hmm. politicians to the DNC platform committee. Um, do you have any hope that they will uh, respond to that letter and make any changes or adoptions to the platform stance on abortion? I do. I do. Mm -hmm. Because the bottom line is this, when a poll shows that over a third of Democrats in this nation are pro-life, you either lose at some point a third of your membership, which weakens your party, or you come back to the table and you come back to where you were when we joined this party. Louisiana State Senator Katrina Jackson, thank you again for joining us. Thank you for having me. For more analysis on this week's DNC convention and the Biden presidential campaign, we're joined by this week's pro-life panel. Marjorie Dannenfelser is the president of the Susan B. Anthony List and co-chair of Pro-Life Voices for Trump. Ramesh Panuru is senior editor for National Review and author of The Party of Death, The Democrats, The Media, The Courts, and The Disregard for Human Life. Thank you both for being here. First off, I'd like to take a look at the DNC party platform. The Democratic Party says it will restore funding for Planned Parenthood, repeal the Hyde Amendment, and protect and codify Roe versus Wade. Marjorie, first, can you put this platform into perspective for us? Well, in two ways, historically, which uh, no one knows this better than Ramesh. In fact, he literally wrote the book on it. But uh, historically, the Democratic Party has been the party of the little guy, the one that protects the weak. This is a complete flip-flop, a, a flip trip from what they used to be. I used to work for a pro-life Democrat. Um, and so the other way, I think, to look at it uh, where, where we uh, can just recite, and we have many times on this show, how the Democratic platform has absolutely zero protection for the unborn child. But I put it in the perspective of, say, how Ralph North did when he communicated that he wouldn't save a child that had been born alive. So we considered it and talked it over with parents. Think about that child born alive in of Virginia or, North, or New York who has absolutely no legal protection. And that is the mission of the uh, Democratic platform. At no point in the gestation of the child, absolutely no protection of the or after. Ramesh, what's your reaction to the DNC's party platform this year? If you look at the Democratic Party's platform language about abortion over time, you see a party that is steadily becoming more extreme. The Democratic platform back in the Bill Clinton era talked about making abortion safe, legal, and rare. It doesn't call for abortion to be rare anymore, just safe and legal. It now includes, for 2016 and 2020, uh, for the first time, these last two times, it includes an explicit call for getting rid of the Hyde Amendment, which has been in place for more than 40 years now and keeps the federal government from funding elective abortions through Medicaid. So that's been something that has been maintained under Republican and Democratic presidencies alike. And now the Democratic Party is against it because it wants taxpayers to fund abortion, which is a very striking illustration of how little they are interested in making abortion rare, let alone protecting unborn life in the law. Ramesh, when did we begin to see this shift happen to this extreme abortion agenda within the Democratic Party? Well, I think that the party has been slowly shedding all of its formerly pro-life elements. Um, that took a long time. It was a long process by which um, pro-lifers found that they no longer had a footing in the Democratic Party. Um, you know, there were a lot of milestones uh, along the way. The 1992 Democratic Convention, when the Bob Casey, the governor of Pennsylvania, popular governor who was a pro-life Democrat, was not permitted to speak about life at the Democratic Convention. That was one of those milestones. And it has just subsequently become ever more ex extreme. You've, you saw the dropping of the language about abortion being rare. Even in, t in 2012, you still had Democratic platform language saying, well, okay, we'll fund social programs to reduce the need for abortion. And now even that's gone. There's nothing that suggests that there's anything in any way regrettable about abortion. Mm. Now to examine the Democratic presidential nominee himself, Joe Biden. Biden has a long political record from his time serving in the Senate to his time in the White House as vice president. Marjorie, what is Biden's record on the pro-life issue? 
Well, he used to be in sync with sort of the mainstream old school Democrat position, which was relatively pro-life. I would never say he was vociferously pro-life, but he was definitely for the Hyde Amendment. He argued for it in pretty strong pro-life language. But uh, in, in um, a way that I think is not consistent with how most conversions are occurring, he converted so-called to the pro-abortion position, the pro-choice position uh, from his perspective. So he's gone from thinking this is a cherished uh, gift from God to something expendable that we ought to actually be forced to pay for. That is an enormous shift and it, it is exactly the opposite of the Trump shift. He went from being adamantly pro-choice to discovering the beauty and the preciousness of that unborn child and believing very much that it should be protected in the law, and that that's the first And the that shift in him and in the Democratic Party that Ramesh uh, outlined so beautifully is an enormous chasm between the elite, elites of the Democratic Party, of uh, the party players and the ones who form the platform, and the grassroots who vote on who um, who will be the next mm. president and senators are, and therefore. Um, they have created a great political opportunity to pick up Democrat votes in battleground states. Ramesh, what do you think viewers should know about Biden's political record on life? Well, Marjorie accurately summarized it. He was, I would say, pro-choice, but he was willing to make certain compromises. He was willing to say that taxpayers should not have to fund abortion. And he flipped on that in order to make this presidential run. And I think it's really striking about the priorities of today's Democratic Party, because Joe Biden did not have to give in and say he was for Medicare for all. He did not have to say he wanted to abolish ICE, the immigration uh, restriction um, enforcer. He did not say he had to, he was for banning fracking, but he did have to flip on taxpayer funding for abortion, because that is now, unfortunately, a core commitment of the Democratic Party. California Kevin, Senator Kamala add, Harris. Oh, go for it, Marjorie. Sorry, I just wanted to add significantly, because I don't want it to get past us, is that he now has a litmus test for judges when it concerns Roe versus Wade, and that is potentially the most high-impact position he has in, um, regarding abortion. Right? No, that's absolutely important to highlight there. And in addition to that, just last week announced that California Senator Kamala Harris is officially the Democratic nominee for vice president. Uh, a bit about Harris, while she was California's attorney general, she investigated David Daleiden's undercover Planned Parenthood video and even ordered a raid on his apartment. Marjorie, what should we know about Harris's ties to Planned Parenthood? Well, she makes Biden look uh, adamantly pro-life. She is... Uh someone who believes that even having religious conviction, especially if your religious conviction leads you to have a pro-life position, that should disqualify you from being a judge. Um, that's what she revealed in her own uh, examination of a, of a judge recently um, from Nebraska for, uh, for a district court position. Um, her her pro-abortion position is so thoroughgoing. It has nothing in common with any of the vestiges of an old school Democrat way of thinking. So combined, that ticket really puts a lot of distance between that ticket and the Rust Belt states and the people who will decide, basically, who becomes the president from battleground states have some religious position very often, especially Catholic, and also hold a very strongly pro-life position, or at least a normal one, or what, what America considers normal. Ramesh, on the life issue, what is your reaction to Harris being on the Democratic ticket as VP? Harris combines strong support for abortion with a kind of intolerant authoritarianism. And you could see it in her attempt to keep somebody off the federal bench just because he was a member of the Knights of Columbus, the case that Marjorie referred to. You can see it in her view that the federal government should step in and require states to get approval from the federal government before they do anything that might restrict abortion. So abortion becomes this sort of super right, even though it's not in the Constitution, it's protected in a way that actual constitutional rights aren't. Wow, well, I could talk to you both um, at such greater length 
on this exact topic. So grateful for you both for your analysis. I do want to note to our viewers for more information and resources on what Catholic voters should know ahead of Election Day and the church's teachings, go to EWTN.com forward slash vote. Marjorie Danen Felser with the Susan B. Anthony List and Ramesh Panuru with National Review. Thank you both. You're welcome. Thank you, The Catholic Church believes in the sanctity of each and every human life from the moment of conception until a natural death. That's a fundamental belief we as Catholics carry with us from inside our church walls to outside in the public square. And as Election Day draws closer, we need to make sure we are first and foremost informing our consciences on the issue of life. We should be rereading the catechism, papal encyclicals on life, and even reviewing the EWTN Voter's Guide. That way, when we get to the ballot box in November, we can make a well-informed and prayerful decision. And that brings us to this week's call to action. Go to ProLifeWeekly.com and sign our pledge that you will vote pro-life. By signing this pledge, we can keep each other accountable to prioritize life at the ballot box. In these next few months leading up to November, let's all take steps to inform our conscience on life, pray, and discern our decision for our vote. How crucial it is to have lawmakers and national leaders who respect the dignity of all human life. Life is sacred and a fundamental right. Again, as we prepare for Election Day, sign the pledge that you'll vote with life in mind. Go to ProLifeWeekly.com. Coming back, we spotlight a woman who's an increasingly marginalized voice within her own party. Meet the executive director of Democrats for Life, who says she won't back down in her fight for the unborn. Welcome back to EWTN Pro-Life Weekly. I'm Katherine Hadro. A group of celebrities came together for a virtual Planned Parenthood concert. That is this week's Speak Out segment. The band, formerly known as the Dixie Chicks, gave a musical performance this week in a celebrity-filled virtual event for the Planned Parenthood Action Fund. The band, which changed its name to the Chicks earlier this year amid protests about racial inequality, performed at the Planned Parenthood event this week, scheduled to coincide with a Democratic National Convention. The members-only event featured speakers, including actresses Jamie Lee Curtis and Rosario Dawson, as well as elected officials, including Massachusetts Representative Ayanna Presley and Minnesota Senator Tina Smith, who previously worked in Planned Parenthood leadership. The Chick's latest album is called Gaslighter, which is a term for deceptive manipulation. So it's ironic they are supporting Planned Parenthood, the masters of deceptive manipulation. Just look at its efforts to mask the reality of abortion with terms like reproductive rights, choice, or fetus. This star-studded virtual event is just the latest way for the nation's largest abortion provider to manipulate the conversation about abortion and to try to distract us from their actual business. As the Democratic Convention took place this week, one group of Democrats still traveled to the party's largely virtual convention to challenge the status quo on abortion. Here's this week's Pro-Life Focus. The abortion industry cannot police itself. Every time they try, they put profits first and women last. As a mostly virtual Democratic convention took place in Milwaukee, Wisconsin this week, one group of Democrats still traveled to the Badger State to protest their own party. Democrats for Life of America says it represents 21 million pro-life Democratic voters. We see our party turning in a direction um, that is embracing abortion. And we are here to say that uh, there are a lot of us who want the party to moderate the platform, that want to be inclusive, and we want to end the discrimination against pro-life Democrats. Kristen Day, executive director of Democrats for Life, has now traveled to seven consecutive Democratic national conventions in an effort to get her party to open the big tent for pro-life voters. People are just so frustrated by the party. So we're here today because we want to be seen, we want to be heard. Day does not just challenge her own party at its conventions. She made a case for pro-life Democrats on the campaign trail as well. 
challenging then-candidate Pete Buttigieg on moderating the party platform to earn the votes of pro-life Democrats. I am a proud pro-life Democrat. So do you want the support of pro-life Democrats? I respect where you're coming from, and I hope to earn your vote, but I'm not going to try to earn your vote by tricking you. Uh, I am pro-choice. That was very, very disappointing, because when you look at how easy the question was, um, from a party that claims to be the party of inclusive, you know, be inclusive and the diverse party that is accepts people for who they are. Um, my question was simply, would you make space for people like me in the party so we can work together on issues that we agree on? And his answer was a resounding no. Day said that answer set the tone for the rest of the primary. You know, everyone, every single presidential candidate really embraced this extreme abortion position. Um, and to me, that answer was so easy. You just, you just say yes. Yes, we think that you're a valuable part of the party and we want you. But Day says she will not give up on her own party. If we give up this fight, the biggest losers are the preborn children. Because who, if, if the parties really become the party of abortion and the party of not abortion, you know, we're going to, the preborn babies and their mothers are going to be the biggest losers. So I say and I fight for them because I think we need to end abortion and we need both parties fighting for it. That does it for this edition of EWTN Pro-Life Weekly. Next week, we will have complete pro-life and Catholic coverage of the Republican National Committee Convention. Be sure to tune in. Until next time, we'd love to hear from you. Find us on social media at EWTN Pro-Life on all social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, we're there. You can also send us a message by emailing prolifeweekly at EWTN.com. We'd love to hear from you. Remember, life is a gift. Your life is a gift. God bless.